Yo, what's good? You're watching Drift Ninja TV. This is episode 4 of Budget Modifications. This will be the last episode on this car. We're going to move on to bigger and better things, but still do some uh, cheaper modifications, or at least try to find a cheap way around the more expensive modifications. Uh, as you can see, swap the wheels out for the stock wheels, which actually made it go faster, and uh, took that tow hook out. But um, I guess I'll just jump right into it. Um, I made these a while back. Um, these are just the in impact support bumpers that is behind uh, the, the um, Duraflex bumper that's on it. So these were foam, but I just bonded these, sanded them smooth, primered them, painted them black. Then I did the uh, uh, carbon fiber um, technique stencil thing. I'll make a video on that. Uh, and then clear coated over it. Um, this P in the up arrow uh, was actually on it and I liked it so I accentuated it with the body color. Um, I couldn't pass inspection which is why I had to buy that black bumper because these things weren't on it like last year in December because they were exposing the metal bumper behind and it was technically like a sh sharp edge or something on the front of the car even though there's like push bars on lifted trucks and stuff that would do a lot more damage. Um, uh, I guess back here, sorry I'm reading off the list, um, back here uh, these are the WRX uh, I guess like wing slaps. Um, I made a stencil for my old car and I never made the wing slats that go all the way down to here. But I think they're really unnecessary um, for looks. Like uh, these stand out uh, a lot by themselves and that gives you room uh, to put like a book bag or something down and it actually makes it more functional when they're not there. But any kind of uh, linear um, wing running uh, front to back in the car uh, will help um, body roll and stop the car um, or slow the car while it's sideways which is why they put them on uh, NASCARs and stuff so uh, if you're wanting some extra safety in my new mounts that's something that you can think about um, Uh, something I forgot to mention is, uh, I guess it's part of the interior, uh, the, the back brake light is actually nitrated out and uh, the housing is sprayed with the uh, interior uh, black vinyl sp spray paint that is holding up great still, as you can see a year later. Um, some places, like uh, in the door jams, you'll see like little nicks, um, or, like some scuffs. Um, but you can just hit that again and then there'll be like two layers of that awesome paint on there. And like, I didn't touch anything up just so you guys could see how much it would wear. Um, as you can see, I did a very thin coat on the steering wheel. Um, so you can see it's like kind of discolored. But I mean like, I did a very thin coat and just like, you know, was abusing it just to see how much it would fall off. Um, while we're looking at the steering wheel. Two steering wheel mods um, that I always, one I always do. Uh, this is just like a piece of tape uh, that I found in here. Um, so I stuck it on as an example. But so you move this back, so better. But this makes your steering wheel just look slightly more aftermarket with the uh, center line on the top of it. Another cool thing if you, you want like to keep your airbag steering wheel, um, but you want it to be a little bit more exotic, you can actually cut the bottom of it flat and then uh, use black electric tape around that and it'll look like a flat bottom steering wheel which is in uh, some F1 cars or in all F1 cars I guess and some other racing steering wheels I've seen on the market. Um, I have these two L stickers. You've seen them in the other video. I was going to get a Formula Drift sticker back here so it would say Drift Ninja TV. That would have been awesome, but I guess I'll do that on my next car. Um, 
The exhaust tip moved a little bit further out, especially almost to the end. And um, my exhaust, I have two bolts that are actually loose on purpose, and uh, it's tight when it's on low RPM, so it gets um, high internal pressure to keep the horsepower up on the low RPMs, but then it spreads apart slightly um, at high RPMs, giving me more horsepower at the upper RPMs. So it's like variable exhaust setups. Uh, kind of like a variable valve timing, but with exhaust. I had that happen on, uh, just like, again, serendipitously, on my green stealth, and it sounded epic. It was like straight pipes, and then past 4,000 RPMs, it would open up and it would like hit. It was crazy. People would ask me if it was like supercharged all the time. I sadly sold this car, that car, instead of this car, um, just because I was afraid that I would have to get expensive exhaust work done um, for inspection, as long as, as well as it needed a power steering uh, front system put in. Uh, the rack was leaking. Um, I guess I touched on uh, blacking out these side markers, but um, I've blacked out eyelids on all my cars. You can do it with black electrical tape if you just want something semi-permanent or uh, go with the black $1 spray paint. Um, and to shine up headlights, uh, this is after. Uh, this is uh, before stock. But this one was hazy for some reason. I don't know why some cars get only one hazy headlight. And you can kind of see some weirdness going on here. I don't know if the camera is focusing or not. But um, I tried like 10 different things and the best thing I came up with to clean that is just regular, normal, standard gasoline. Just get some gasoline rag, make sure you do it before you paint your car, I guess. And it will literally eat the top surface of um, uh, the oxidation, I guess, right off. And um, you really even have to scrub, it just chemically removes it. And it's like a, I think a secret of the market. They just want you to buy their weird shit to rub on. And that requires a lot of elbow grease. Literally, you'll defog them in like five seconds or something. Um, just so you guys know, I converted over to this black carbon fiber mini antenna and then lost my normal antenna. And um, that sucked because um, I was originally planning on putting this on and then using the old antenna just in my trunk. However, um, that mini antenna needed the whole setup to be held in there. So I ended up losing that long, ugly antenna. Um, but I guess this unit is what I'm talking about. But it requires to be screwed into the, uh, the working unit and it's not a real antenna so it, it deletes the radio out which is pretty stupid. Um, it's one of those like eBay things where you're like I shouldn't have bought that. Um, another trunk mod is um, these really cool, you can see uh, these wires. I think I made a video about this, but um, I can't find it. So, as you can see, there's just a positive and a negative on these back speakers. You take a shit ton of this standard uh, speaker wire. And take the computer speaker. And I think these have about... I have two of them on either speaker, making, I think, like 15 feet from the car, which is pretty funny, especially if you're like uh, in the middle of the woods or like at a uh, tailgating thing. I used to do that all the time in high school with these bad boys out, and we just, uh, Solder them on there with some extra solder, and uh, you can see I have a zip tie right here uh, as my string release. So, because I try to keep my weight low in the car, so um, everything's under here. I don't think there's anything else cool. Here's the other speaker. Um, I keep all my extra lights and bolts in one container for my car. 
Um, these are just like some trim pieces that I'm not going to use. And uh, also, I probably have said this in another, another video, but you'll see on the trunks inside of all my cars, I reuse painter's tape because that shit is expensive. So you can get like two or three uses out of them if you're smart with it. Um, another trunk mod is I wanted to mod the white of the trunk. I have this cool, um, everybody asked me if it's black light, and I used to say no, but it's, it does give a black light effect. It's not picking up right now very well because it's the daytime. But at night, I thought it was just blue at first, but I think it is black. Or a black light. And, um, I had this, like, really boring light up here. I was gonna do, like, a funky, like, chandelier or, like, something funny, but I didn't get around to it. Um, I didn't really know what to put, and that's why I didn't get around to it. But I was gonna put something funny there. Something like Top Gear. Um... Alright, so this is one of my favorite mods I've done to the whole car. The window's not rolled up all the way. Oh, I wonder. Oh, yeah. Alright, so as you can see, I did what I call a window slant mod. And it takes the window line of the back window of a four door car and kind of tweaks it upward and makes it look a lot more sporty. It kind of uh, makes the back area above the rear wheel look a little bit more beefy. And last but not least, I want to show you my radio din. I told you I swapped out the uh, to the Corolla radio, and there's a wide open space here. I actually took out my cup holders because I use like water bottles, anyways. And I uh, just cut this. Uh, it kind of looked like a uh, trapezoid with the top or the part that's in there being the widest, and it just swoops up. I just like, uh, I didn't even measure, I just estimated it, and it clicks right in there, and it actually has like two pockets on either side of it too, that go lower, um, so, yeah, that is the end of the modifications for this car, I hope you enjoyed it, uh, I had fun building this car, uh, total build came under $750 for all this stuff, and, uh, a little bit of time spraying, um, and what I mean a little, I mean like maybe like 10 days, like two hours each day, and uh, maybe some sanding hours in there too, like maybe like one or two hours of sanding um, here and there, but uh, yeah, this is um, it's a nice little car to whip around, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it, uh, or if you, if you don't think it looks awesome i hope it at least entertained you uh thanks for watching peace